Hello and welcome, I'm Cindy. I blog over at DIYBeautify.com where I am absolutely passionate about sharing how to create a beautiful home on a budget. And today's project is super, super budget friendly. I'm sure you've all seen those sort of rustic farmhouse beaded trays that are large and you can expect to pay between $60 and $80 for one. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make one for much, much less cost me $20 and if you have to buy um, the beads as well it's going to cost you maybe $25 but you should be able to make it for $25. So let me show you how gorgeous it is. This is it. Isn't it pretty? It has this big heavy wood round. It has gorgeous feet and a beaded edge and as you can see it's got this crackle finish on it sort of a shabby farmhouse rustic look. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. In fact, I'm gonna show you how to pull this whole project together and you're gonna be loving how easy it is. So let's take a look at the supplies. And I bought all the supplies I'm using at Lowe's with the exception of one. You're gonna need one of these big wood rounds. This is in Low at Lowe's and I think it was 13, 99, 1388, something like that. It's thick and it's not gonna look like this. It's going to be a natural wood color, but I've already gone ahead and done my faux stain, which I'll tell you about in a second. You're also gonna need two packages of these, uh, they're furniture feet or finials for a curtain rod. And again, they're gonna be natural. So two packages, those are $3 each, and then you're gonna need about 50 or so wood beads. Now, it doesn't matter if they have the hole, um, they could also be the split beads, which are flat on one end, but those are a lot more expensive, so I'd recommend getting the ones with the holes. And like I said, I've gone ahead and I've pre-stained my wood round. Now I didn't use stain, I used dark furniture paste by Annie Sloan and I just brushed it on, let it sit for a minute or so and then wiped it off. And the thing I love about using wax instead of stain is my project is ready to go within like 30 minutes. There's no waiting for the stain to dry which can take a couple days if you live in a humid climate. So I have gone ahead, like I said, and pre-faux stained both my round and my feet. And what I also did with my feet that I'm gonna share with you today is I did a crackle finish. Can you see that? And I didn't use any kind of special crackle medium. I just used this. Have you seen people crackle with this before? It is the coolest thing ever. I wish I'd have known about this earlier because years ago I tried to do some crackle ornaments and the, I had bought crackle medium and it just didn't take for some reason. So anyhow, I'm gonna show you how to do this today on the wood round. Now, as you saw at the beginning, this is going to have the feet attached to the bottom and the wood beads are going to go all the way around the top. I'm still debating whether or not I want to like attach some kind of handles to it, like a leather handle to lift it. I'm going to think about that a little more, but I'm going to turn my phone around and show you how to get this crackle look on your piece. Now, you don't have to do a stain finish. If you really like the look of um, I don't know, maybe for Christmas you want to do a red base so that when you crackle it, see how the bottom layer is what shows through? Now for me, that is my stain. For you, you might want to have like a red or a green or an aqua color revealed underneath. So just keep that in mind so that when you, um, you know, do your, your first coat on your piece, know that that is gonna be not the final finish, it's gonna be just the little bits that are peeking through. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my phone around. Now, obviously, let's go over this again, you're gonna need 
the Elmer's glue and a foam brush. This one's a little narrow, but I'll make it work. And you're also gonna need your top coat paint, which I'm doing white, and I've grabbed some Country Chic Simplicity, which is just a really bright white, and a paintbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake my paint up a little bit. And the idea behind doing this crackle coat, the way that it works, is that you do a layer of your Elmer's glue and you do it kind of thick and gloppy in some areas and not so thick and gloppy in others. And then you let it sit for a few minutes just until it kind of gets tacky. Like you don't want it to dry thoroughly because putting the paint over it before it dries thoroughly is what causes that crackle effect. So let me flip my phone around and we'll get going on this crackle finish. So just make sure your piece is clean and dry. I did have to sand the top of my, I think this is just a tabletop at Lowe's. I sanded it a little bit um, so it's nice and smooth. I have plans for this for Christmas. So then what you're gonna do, just take your Elmer's glue. Oh, sorry, that really hurt my wrist. Squeezing is what I'm not supposed to be doing. You know what, this is not gonna be coming out fast enough for me, so I'm gonna take the lid off and do one of these dealy bobs. Okay, and then you're gonna, you don't have to cover every single section of it, but you kinda wanna do it sort of haphazardly, and like I said, have some bigger areas and some finer areas. I'm not gonna worry about the edge so much because that's where our wood beads are gonna be glued. I'll still do it a little bit, but the thicker part, I would definitely want to be in the middle where you're gonna notice it. Okay. that's good. Now I'm just gonna set it aside to dry for a few minutes. And while that's happening, I want to show you how I easily and quickly paint my beads. I have about 50 of these balls and trying to paint them by hand is obviously insane. And I wanted them to look like this. So I wanted them to have the look of the brown paint underneath or the, you know, the wax with sort of a shabby, chippy white top. But again, applying the Elmer's glue to each of these beads individually and then trying to paint it and allowing it to crack, I mean, that would have tested my patience. So I'm going to show you right now how quickly and easily you can get this same look. Wasn't that a fun way to learn how to paint beads really quickly and easily? Okay, so I've actually used a little Lazy Susan from my pantry underneath so that because after I shut the video off, I realized I forgot to paint the edges with glue. So I went back and, not this edge, but the this edge. I did that really, really fast just with the glue that was left on my brush. So now it's time to paint the white. 
And the thing you need to remember about this is you don't want to over to paint over the same section more than once, if at all possible. So even though I'm trying to do a fairly thick coat, um, I'm trying not to go back over, back and forth over the same section. Can you see that? I'm just taking my paint and I'm not caring too much about the direction, which really goes against my perfectionistic tendencies. <laughs> Usually when I distress, I paint it completely first and then I come back and distress. But this chippy finish is, I don't know, it's kind of artistic because you don't really know what the finished product is. You don't know your outcome. Um, so, it's a little bit risky for those of us that like to know exactly what we're doing. But I felt it was time to live a little, do something different. I'm telling you, this Lazy Susan is really helping me just to spin this tray around while I'm painting it. Okay, so as you can see, it is on there. Now I'm super impatient and I like to see what my stuff's gonna look like. Ooh. Let me just seal this paint up and then I'll show you a trick to get it to dry faster. One of my favorite tools that I have in my arsenal is this little heat tool. It's just a little heat gun and it's kind of like a blow dryer only it blows really hot hot air. So you could use a blow dryer if you don't have one of these. These are only about $15 to buy on Amazon. I totally recommend getting one. I'll leave a link um, for this one in the comments but I'm just going to turn it on. It's going to get kind of loud and I'm going to start drying this out a little bit faster. It's going to take probably an hour or so for that glue that was thicker to fully dry, but this will get us started. You see the cracking that's happening, the crackling that's happening right here? It's already starting to crackle over here too. You keep going. In just those few minutes, you can see how much crackling is happening on this piece. This is really cool. So I need to just set this aside to dry and then I'm going to attach my legs to the bottom, my feet. So I'm gonna to have to drill holes in the bottom of this and then I'll pop back in and show you how to finish it off with the beads on the top. Okay, everything has dried and I'm excited to show you how it all looks. So here is my um, chippy crackled tray top. You can see that I painted and crackled the sides and I went ahead and let's see if you can see, I marked holes and drilled four holes on the back for our feet. <clears throat> um, I also went ahead and just did a coat of clear wax just to protect. I just recommend something like that to protect your pieces. It makes it easier to dust too. I did want to point out a tip. You might have noticed that these finials are stuck in this styrofoam. I just picked these up from the Dollar Tree. So it's a dollar for this package of two little circles of styrofoam. I just leave them in the plastic because that way you're not messing with the, the mess of the styrofoam. And it's just great and cheap way to, when you need to paint something like um, 
a doorknob or you know something that would not stand up on its own you just stick it in there paint it and it dries and boom you're good so i'm going to flip my phone and we're going to attach our feet i'm so excited and i hope that they fit usually my husband does all the drilling for me but he's at work so i just found <clears throat> a drill bit that was a little bit smaller than the end of my <clears throat> finial, excuse me. And they should just easily twist into place. Yep, it's going in. Okay, you just attach the rest of them. last one turn it so you can see it and you guys i eyeballed the placement of these you might see i have some ruler lines that i drew i just kind of laid them out first to figure out where they looked good i did kind of use a ruler just to make sure that they were across from each other but i don't measure stuff and i think it's gonna look really cute can you see that, the little feet? Isn't that adorable? So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit and the next step and kind of the final step to this is to attach the wood beads along the end. Now I did have in my craft stash, I found this strip of leather. It was actually about this long. It's kind of like to make a bracelet. I believe I bought this it's suede and leather. I guess that makes sense, right? Suede is the back of leather. I bought it at Joanne a couple years ago. So I cut half of it down into two little strips and I'm thinking, I'm gonna see if my husband has some little screws and I'm gonna attach a little handle on each side. It's not gonna be super functional. I guess it will be a little bit, they're, they're short but I think it'll just add a little bit of extra charm to this, but we're not gonna work on that today. So to finish this off, I have all my wood beads over here that I painted with brown and then painted with white. And surprisingly, even though they were painted in a plastic bag, you can see that they are not perfect. They almost look crackled. And so the plan is to glue them all along the edge like this and just create a beaded edge. That I think will be really nice for, you know, when I wanna put candles on here, just will keep things from sliding off. So, <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and glue all these beads on. now. When you have beads with holes like this, obviously I don't want the hole to show. So I'm gonna glue the beads hole to hole along the perimeter of my tray. And I'm gonna glue them fairly close to the edge. And then I'm just gonna do a little drop of hot glue um, on this the hole of the one that's coming next this is how I I made my have a beaded farmhouse fall wreath and I did the same kind of thing to create the beaded look I know I'm gonna have a ton of strings but my heat gun will take care of that 
and you can see how cute that's gonna look. Just imagine the whole thing with beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. I'm not gonna 